Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. This is the final video in our Mastering Lightroom Classic CC video series. I'd like to take a moment just to thank everyone who has watched this series and thank you in particular to everyone who has emailed and messaged me very kind words of encouragement. I truly do appreciate it. As I mentioned, this is the last episode. In this episode, we're going to be covering the web module. The web module allows you to create photo galleries for your website. And like I recommended in the book and slideshow modules, I recommend that for the web module, you take all the images that you want in your photo gallery and put them in a collection. So I have this collection I've used in the past. I called it Primates. So I have all these Primates in this collection. I'm going to go over to the web gallery by clicking on the web uh, link right here in the top right-hand corner. And you can see by default it's showing some images on a page. If we go over and look at the top right-hand corner, you'll see there's a drop-down. And right now it says Classic Gallery. Well, there's four different types of galleries. We have this classic gallery. We have a grid gallery. We have a square gallery. And we have a track gallery. And over here on the left-hand panel, we have in the template browser presets for all these different types of galleries. So for the classic gallery, we have a charcoal preset, a clean preset, dark poppy seed preset, for the grid gallery down here, we have three. We have the dark. We have a grid gallery that's the default gallery. And then we have this lighter gallery. Then the square, we have three as well. And you can see that if you find something you like in the template browser, it will save you a lot of time. You could just click on it and you'll be good to go. But usually, we won't find what we need there. And we need to create something that is custom to our images in our style. So I'm going to go back up here to this drop down and I'm going to go to the square gallery. I just kind of like that square gallery. Now we have a lot of options to uh, modify this page so it looks the way we want it to. First of all, when we look at the layout style, we have those four that we just mentioned. But I want to point out that you also could find more galleries online by clicking that button there. I'm not going to do it in this video, but I just want you to be aware of that, that you could find more beyond these four. Now below that we have site info. Well, this is the info that gets um, added to the web page that we're going to be creating or the web gallery that we're going to be creating. And by default, the gallery title is Lightroom Gallery. And I'm just going to call it Primates. And there you can see in the top left hand corner now it says Primates. And the gallery author, if you want to put your name there, you could do that, and I'll do that. The next is the gallery author URL. So you could put your website here. And I'm going to put the onlinephotographytraining.com website there. And we'll click that. And you can see that what that does is where my name is, it's now a hyperlink. So when this is web gallery is created, someone could click on that and they'll be brought to my website. This extra info, you could type something in here. I'll just type test and it will be up here over here on the right hand side. So you can see there's test right there. Now, of course, I don't want that. So we're not going to have that extra info. So we could modify what is added to the top of the gallery with the site info tab. Next is the color palette. We could modify the colors that are here. We could go with a different color background, maybe like a gray, maybe a real dark gray. Let's go with that. Um, we could change the color of the text if I want the text to be white or maybe just a lighter gray. Let's go with that. And we could change the color of the icons. And there's really no icon showing in this, but if there were, you could change the color of those as well. Beyond that, below that is appearance. So how big do you want these thumbnails? Do you want them smaller, medium, 
or do you want them quite large? Let's go with large. Now, thumbnail loading, do you want them to load as you scroll? So as someone scrolls through the page, the pictures will appear one by one. Or do you want them to appear all at once? When the page loads, all the images load. Usually, you prefer on scroll, particularly if you're using large thumbnails because it will take longer for them to render. And if you have thumbnail loading set to all at once, the entire page will take a long time to load. So we'll go with on scroll. Then show header. That's the info that we just typed in at the top. I want to show it, so I'm going to keep that clicked. And do we want a floating header? And if I click there as you uh, scroll, you can see that header stays there. I'm not going to use a floating header. We're going to let that scroll away. Next, below appearance is image info. If I had any titles in the metadata or caption in the metadata, I could let that be printed as well by clicking these boxes. I don't, but if I did, I could click one. And not only could you have the title print, but you could have a lot of different metadata. You could change, change it, not use title. You could have sequence, file name, exposure, equipment, or whatever, print or, or show up along with this. Um, I'm not going to have any labels at all, print, or show, not print. Output settings. This is the quality of the images. Uh, do you want them, uh, as you move the quality slider to the right, you'll get higher quality images, but it will be larger and it will take longer to load. So usually it's been my experience that when you have a quality slider, anything 80 or above usually is excellent. When you start going below 80, that's when you start to visibly see an issue. So I'll keep it at 80. And metadata, do you just want the copyright only or do you want all the metadata to go with the images? I'm going to put all the metadata so everything will go with the images, including all my um, personal info, like my uh, I keep in metadata, I have my address and um, my name and stuff like that. So I'm going to have all of it. Now, watermarking, you can see some of these have watermarks here. And if I check that box or turn that checkbox off, you can see the watermarks are gone. So you could have the watermarks show there, and we've covered watermarking in previous episodes, and you could have whatever watermark you created in the past show up here. Um, I'm not going to have any watermarks on the image. Now sharpening, when you output these, these images from Lightroom, uh, do you want them sharpened? You would check this box and then you would choose the amount of sharpening, low, standard, or high. I usually sharpen and I'll leave it at standard. And that usually works out pretty well. And it's saying sharpening is applied on output. So it's not applied right now. When we output the images, we'll get some sharpening added to them. Next is upload settings. You have the option to upload your gallery direct from Lightroom to your website via FTP. So you would click here and right here where it says FTP server, where it says custom settings right now, you would click and edit that. And right here you would put your server name, your username and password so you could access the FTP server. Um, then the server path if needed and all this other info. I'm not going to do that. Um, I don't use FTP tech, you know, on my website, but if you do, you have the option of directly uploading this web gallery from Lightroom to um, your website via FTP, and you could put it in a subfolder like photos or whatever photo, whatever subphoto you have, and um, include a full path if if needed. So we're just going to uncheck that. I'm not using any upload settings. So I pretty much am done. I created my web gallery, but what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm not using FTP as I mentioned, but first of all, we could preview it and see what it will look like. And if you look over here on the left-hand panel at the bottom, it says preview in browser. So we'll click on that. And what it will do is it will, uh, as you can see the status bar in the top left-hand corner, it's creating our web gallery and it's going to open up in my browser. And we'll be able to take a look at what it will look like when it is online. And there it is. There is a web page and you can see primates and you can see where my name is. If I click on that, 
that will open up my website. So that is hyperlinked the way we want it. Also, we could click on an image and make the image bigger, and then we could page through the images by clicking this right arrow key. So you could go through all the different images in the web gallery, make sure that everything is loading the way you want it to load, everything looks the way you want it to look. Um, very easy, very quick. Uh, when you're satisfied, just click this little X here. We could close down the web page like you normally would, and we'll go back to Lightroom. Now, once we have this and we're happy with it, we want to get it on the website. Now, if you did the upload settings up here for an FTP server, you would then click Upload right here. And when you click Upload, it's going to come up with a warning now because I don't have any settings there. But it will then uh, generate the web pages and upload them via FTP. If you don't use an FTP server, you would click Export right here. And then you would give this a name, and I'm going to just call it Primates. And I'm going to save it to my desktop right there. So you click Save. So what it's going to do is generate these, um, this web gallery. And it's going to make a web page. You can see that the status bar in the left-hand corner, top left-hand corner, is progressing. And when it's done, it may ding. I can't remember. And then we could go over and look. And what it will do is it will create the actual web page and it will include all the associated files meaning all the images and here's primates here's our folder that we created and you can see we have index.html and if i click on that that will again open up our browser and it will bring us to our images and we could then go through our images and then once we have that we would upload all of this info uh, all this, all these um, folders and that HTML file to our website so that people could look at our web gallery. Now, there's only a couple more things I want to talk about. Once you create your web gallery, if you just want to save the settings, not necessarily the images, just the settings so that you could use this same layout in the future, go over here where it says template browser and click on this little plus sign and give it a name. We're going to call it um, My Web Gallery. And we're going to click Create. And when you do, down here in User Templates is My Web Gallery. So that is all the settings that we did over here on the right-hand panel. It does not include the images. If you want to create a kind of template that includes the images, you want to go up here where it says Create Saved Web Gallery. Click there. And we're going to call this uh, My Primate Web Gallery. And we're going to put it inside My Primate's Collection, which I can't open at the moment, but we'll in a minute. And you have the option of just using virtual copies for the images or set it as a targeted collection so you could more easily add images to it. And then you, of course, could sync it with Lightroom CC, which is the Lightroom on the web version. So we're just going to click Create, and then once it does, we can see it that it's right here in our collection primates. We have that gallery right there. And that's really everything you need to know about how to create a web gallery in Lightroom. Again, I'd like to thank everyone who has watched this series. I really do appreciate it. I've been getting a lot of emails. People want the videos for this series. I'm not going to be creating DVDs for the videos or, or a DVD from the videos. Um, there's just too much. They're too long. It's like um, hours and hours of video. But I will make the videos available um, for purchase that you could then download and watch them on your computer. But to reiterate uh, what I always say, the videos will always be free on YouTube. So. They're never uh, going to come off YouTube, at least while I'm still walking the earth. So again, thank you, everyone. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.